Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Medzone African Motives. Uh, we are still on our grade 10 revisions. Uh, remember, we had our introduction of our other parts of the numbers. And actually, this is the introduction of our numbers, not to say we had a revision. We had maybe for those who wrote uh, last, last year, but uh, maybe you are redoing this uh, again. But uh, for us who are starting, uh, this will be the first part that we are talking about. So we want to focus on our real number system. Uh, remember, we had a condition that uh, these numbers can be actually be written in different ways when we're in grade nine. Uh, we talked about this. We talked about our rational numbers or irrational numbers. So we're just going to have a revision, just a basic revision uh, so that you can have a recap in your mathematics uh, for grade 10. All right, we've got the part of the rational numbers, which is the first part that we had. Uh, remember that the rational numbers, that a rational number is a number that can be expressed in the form of A over B. So remember that was the most important part that this is going to be written in the form of A over B, whereby this A is being what? an integer in that case and also b is being an integer so a and b are integers but we know that this b cannot be equal to zero our denominator cannot be equal to zero so that is the condition that you must have if you are working with what if you are working uh with a uh, rational numbers so meaning to say any rational number as long you can write it as a fraction like this whereby these are integers. Integers, remember, we are talking about positive or negative whole numbers. Positive or negative whole numbers, All right? So we shall talk about different uh, types of uh, uh, numbers that can fall under a rational number because this it's, it's a bunch of numbers that can fall under a rational or fall under rational numbers. So as we can see that rational numbers include all of the following numbers, which can be expressed as common uh, fractions. All right, so which numbers are we talking about? Any number that can be expressed as a fraction. Let's start with the integers, the whole numbers and the natural numbers. All right, remember we talked about the integers. We say these are positive or negative or numbers. Already here, we are talking about all numbers. And we know that for all numbers, we are talking about numbers that are, these are the counting values that we talk about every day, that's zero, one, two, three, and so on and so on. Then we talk of the natural numbers, all right? The natural numbers, we are no, no longer having a zero in that case. For the natural numbers, we are having our N uh, starting from, a one, two, three, and so on and so on, right? But for the whole numbers, we are going to have a zero. So we are saying all these, they can behave given as what? As rational numbers. Talk of uh, a number such as six. Six, we can refer to six as an integer. We can refer to six as a whole number, as a natural number. So every of these, to be written as a fraction, to be written as a fraction, every of these numbers, you are going to divide by one. So if I have a number such as five, to be given as a fraction, every number or every whole number that you have or an integer that you have, to be written as a fraction, you write it as over one, like this. Five divided by one, it does not change anything. If you divide, by one, it does not affect anything on your calculations. Let us take a closer look. Five over one like this. This is going back to, to five. Minus uh, 14 over one like this. It goes back to minus 14. So meaning to say this does not change our number as it was before. So every number can be written as of one, as you can see, we now have the A and the B, whereby these are integers and A is not, and B is not equal to zero. So that means 
these are rational numbers. So as you can see, we can express even a zero. All right, even a condition when you are working with what? With a zero. A zero can be written as over one, which gives us a zero. But one over zero like this, this one does not exist you are going to have an error for this one, meaning to say these values, they do not exist. They're actually infinity. So meaning to say a number that is referred as zero can be given as zero over one. All right, zero over one, we have an answer. So let me try to show you what I'm trying to say here. Uh, that's zero divided, you divide by, by one. As you can see here, you get an answer, which is what, which is zero. But if you consider one over zero like this, this one does not exist. As you can see, it gives you math error. So meaning to say, you cannot write a number like five over zero. You cannot write a number like seven over zero. These ones, they do not exist. But we can write zero over any number. It can be zero over seven. It can be zero over 10. You get a zero but this one does not exist. So do not uh, confuse uh, between the two. There, we are talking about dividing by one to give us a zero. That means we are having it as a, as a rational number. All right, the same thing appears to the mixed numbers. Mixed numbers are also rational numbers. Remember, we talked about that in our grade nine. Talk of a number that is written as three and one over four like that. It's a mixed number that we have, a mixed part. So remember, how do you convert back? You multiply these two, then you add a one. So if you multiply these two, it's going to be three times four, four times three, which is 12. Then 12 plus one, which is 18. So this is going to give us 18 over, over four. Or you can do this on your calculator. If you want to be straightforward, just take your calculator here. It gives you this as, as an improper fraction, all right? So as we can see there on top of the, this division here, as we can see on top of this division, there is a part of a mixed number there. So you press the shift to that part like this, then you can uh, fill in your values. So this is three, all right? You press here, you put a one, you go down, you put a four. So this is going to give you are 18 over four, which is the same. So like I said, you can do that on your calculator to check if you are obtaining the same thing. So as we can see, this is a rational number. It is a rational number because we have written it in the form of A over B, whereby A is a whole number, I mean, is an integer. This is an integer. We talked about this and B is not equal to zero. And as you can see, this number is not equal to zero such as two and a half, five over two, these are integers. So meaning to say, this is a rational number. So mixed numbers can be uh, rational numbers. That's what we are trying to say. So if you, if you ever, whenever you see a mixed fraction, a mixed number, you know that it's a rational number. Whenever you see an integer, you see a whole number, you see a natural number, you know it's, a rational number. All right. Also, we have a part of terminating decimal. Terminating means it ends. A decimal that ends, it ends at a certain value. So if I am given a decimal such as 0, 0,4, this decimal is terminated. It has ended. It has ended. Like we don't, we do not have any other numbers that, that follows. So it has ended. So a terminating decimal is also a rational number. Why? If you change this, remember this is 10th, 10th, 10th. Talk of 10th, right? Uh, in this case, we talk of what? Of 10th in that case, hundredth, thousandth, and so on. So for 10th, you are, what are you going to do for 10th? You are going to divide by this number. All right, you're going to divide by, by a 10. So meaning to say this number, you are going to divide it by 10, four over 10. Hundredth, you divide by 100,000, 
you divide by a thousand. So in this case, we've got four over 10, where we've got integers, even if we reduce this by two by two, if you reduce this uh, by two, let's say you decide to reduce this by two, you reduce this by two as a common term, four divided by two, which is two, uh, 10 divided by two, which is five. We can see that it's, it is now in simplest form. Still, it is a rational number. Two being a whole number, I mean an integer, five being an integer. So meaning to say we are still satisfying what is a rational number. So a terminating decimal can be referred to as, as a rational number. Take an example of 0, 0,125, which is 125 over a thousand, because we've got tenth, hundredth, thousandth. So we're going to divide by a thousand which you can see these are integers. Reduce it, you get one over eight, which are also integers. So it means it is a rational number. All right, the also part appears when we are talking about the recurring decimal. Actually, there's going to be an exercise after this class that we are going to prove uh, certain recurring decimals. Remember a recurring decimal, if I write 0, 0,3 like this on top, it means, this three is repeating itself. It's equal to 0, 0,3333333 and, and so on and so on and so on. The number that is repeating itself. So if I write it like uh, 0, 0,72 and I put it only on two like that, it means it is two that is repeating itself. So it will be 0, 0,7, then the two starts to repeat itself and so on and so on and so on up to the, up to the last term. So that is what we call a uh, recurring decimal. So like I said, we are going to have an exercise where we are going to prove that. But for now, I want you to know that a recurring decimal is a, is a rational number. All right, so these are decimals such as, uh, if you check, maybe it can be 0, uh, 0,52 like this, right? So if all these are having this bar on top, it means, these two numbers, they are repeating. So it is going to be 0, 0,52. It repeats again, 52. It repeats again, 52. It repeats like that, like that. So the number that has got this on top, the bar on top, these dots, these dots on top are the ones that are repeating. So if I have 0, 0,1 and have a bar like a dot here, it means one is repeating. It's, it's only one that we are going to have throughout. It's, it's an endless decimal, it does not end. It is going to be repeating, it is going to be, and, and that's why we have to put this and so on and so on, because it is an endless decimal, but that recurring decimal, it's a what? It's a rational number, it's a part, it's a part of rational numbers. So we are going to prove that, like I said, uh, on another exercise for now, I just want you to have a recap, know your numbers, revise your numbers. All right, then we also have the irrational numbers and also for these uh, rational, sorry, sorry for that. Also for these rational numbers, remember the letter here that we use to represent our rational numbers is Q. So these ones are represented by Q, all right? Uh, right, so some of these ones I shall talk about them as we move on. Then the irrational numbers, these ones are represented by Q bar like this. If you see this, these are irrational numbers. So these are numbers, so irrational numbers are non-terminating, non-recurring decimals. They cannot uh, be expressed as a ratio between integers. So meaning to say it's a, it's a complete opposite to what we had before. You cannot write them as recurring decimals, as terminating decimals. You cannot write them as a ratio between integers as A over B, whereby A of, whereby these are integers. So what are examples of such numbers that we call irrational numbers? If I have a number like one over the square root of three, this one, it's an irrational number. Yes, it's a fraction, a ratio, but A only is an integer. This square root of three 
is not an integer because the square root of three cannot be simplified. If we simplify this on our calculator, I want you to see this is square root of three. It's something that you cannot simplify, right? And it's not even a, a, a recurring decimal. So meaning to say, this is not gonna work. All right, we move on. Uh, maybe we've got, uh, uh, maybe it's the cube root. Let's say we've got uh, one over uh, the cube root. In this case, let's say we've got the cube root of a certain number, which is seven. This cube root of seven cannot be simplified. So you see that, look what we're having there. Even the number on its on the cube root of seven, that is shift here, the cube root of seven, it gives us a number that is not exact. So you are going to see that. Also the cube roots, they are part of these irrational numbers when, if you are to express them. So we talk about the square roots that are not perfect squares. If a number is not a perfect square, talk of three, talk of two, talk of nine, I mean talk of 11, these are not perfect squares. So how do you know that this one is a perfect square? Remember a perfect square, we talk about one squared, two squared, uh, three squared. So one to the uh, exponent of two, one times one, which is one, two times two, uh, which is four, three times three, which is nine. So these are perfect squares. So if I have the square root of four, this one, I cannot list it under this because it's, it's, it's a perfect square. Here, we want those that are not, meaning to say we are talking about, about numbers such as three, numbers such as five, uh, numbers such as two, numbers such as six, numbers such as seven, numbers such as eight, numbers such as 10. These are the numbers which are not perfect squares. All right, we talk of the cube root that are not perfect cubes, not. Remember perfect cubes, we are talking about numbers, one to the exponent of three, which is one, two to the exponent of three, which is eight, three to the exponent of three, which is 27. These are perfect cubes. So if it is not a perfect cube, it means you can't determine its cube root and you obtain an integer. Take a closer look of the cube root of uh, a perfect cube. What, what happens to a perfect cube? If I determine the cube root, of a perfect cube shift here the cube root of a perfect cube let's take an example 27 what we obtain is an integer but if i determine the cube root of a number which is not a perfect cube let's take example maybe it's six like that or it's nine you you are not getting an integer so that means that is not a rational number so it's an e rational number. So that's the opposite of what we've been talking about. So the following uh, number line contains a few real numbers. All right, so this is a concept of all the real numbers that we talked about, uh, irrational number, real number, and so forth and so forth. All right, so you have to know your numbers. Like I said before, guys, you must be able to know all your numbers and their presentation. What does it mean? What are real numbers? That is the question. What are real numbers? Because we have this condition of having real numbers. If you consider now real numbers, all right. Here we are now on real numbers, which is given by the letter R. So the real numbers, they are now a combination of all what we talked about before. What is it? The rational numbers, it's a combination of the rational and the rational, the irrational numbers put together. So this is a combination. This is a combination of a rational, of rational, and rational so remember for rational we said you can use the letter q and irrational irrational which you can use cuba like this numbers 
All right. So I think it makes sense. We can put it that way. It's a combination of the real, uh, the rational, and the irrational numbers to give us what we call the real numbers. So whenever we talk of these, uh, we see that that's a real number, right? So meaning to say, uh, these ones are now part of what? Are now part of real numbers because it, as long as it's a number that can be either rational or we can have it as an uh, irrational number. So meaning to say two is a real number. The square root of three is also a real number because we know that the square root of three, it's an irrational number. But being an irrational number, it, it is a real number because we are saying it's a combination of these two. So a number can be what? Can be a rational or it can be an irrational. Still, it's referred to as what? As a real number. So real numbers are opposed with those ones which are non-real. Non-real, those are numbers that do not, we cannot determine them. They do not exist in their simplification. All right, let us take a closer look of the square root of negative values. The square root, I'm gonna explain much further there. Uh, the square root of negative nine like this. You can see that you can't obtain the square root of what? Of a negative number. So these are non-real. They are now non-real numbers. The square root of nine, the, the square root of a negative number, you cannot determine such values. But real numbers, like I said, guys, real numbers can be both, can be compared. As long as you talk about real numbers, that number can be a rational or it can be an irrational. So this is the list that we have on our uh, real numbers. So like I said, you can talk about irrational or real, uh, being a, I mean, an irrational number being a real number, an integer being a, a real number. Any guys. That, that's the condition of what of real numbers. If I talk about 0, 0,2, if I talk about 0, 0,2, 2, 2, 2, 2, if I talk about 1 over 7, if I talk about the square root of 3, as long that number, as long that part can be simplified, it's a real number. As long it can be simplified, it's a, it's a real number. Whether it gives you an endless decimal, but if it cannot be simplified, it becomes non-real, non-real, non-real. That one opposite to real numbers. Those are the ones that you can't even simplify on your calculator, all right? So this is the part that we are talking about here in conclusion. We are simply saying uh, on your calculations, uh, not on calculations will produce real numbers, they are, Two such calculations um, that uh, they do not produce what the real numbers we talked about what the square root of negative numbers and also a division by zero. Remember, on the division by zero, we saw that uh, we did that as an example. When I was giving you numbers such as five over zero, one over zero, to say these ones they do not exist. So those ones they are non-real values. All right. So a summary on. Uh, of the real number system, we talked about uh, the natural numbers that, uh, all right, in actual sense, we never talked about the natural numbers. We just talked about all other numbers in passing. All right, the natural numbers are the ones that you're going to consider, but from your grade uh, nine, we talked about this. These ones, they do not include zero, all right? Do not uh, include, they do not include zero, they do not include zero all right so these are our natural numbers all right so if whenever we are talking about our natural numbers we are simply talking about uh, uh the it the integers that we had like positive integers that we had but not considering a zero so what are natural numbers so these are the numbers that we are talking about uh from one, two, three, and so on and so on, being a, a positive. So like I said, uh, in this case, these are all positive, all positive whole numbers, if we, if we put it that way, all positive, okay, integers. That, that can be, that can make sense in a better way so that you can understand this, all right? So we are simply referring to all 
are positive integers all positive integers so like i said uh, in this case zero is not included zero is not included on natural numbers so that's the indication of natural numbers which is n which is now this zero is included on all numbers all right if you talk of the whole numbers uh, zero is now included so meaning to say when we talk about the whole numbers we're going to start from uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and so on. So these are what we refer to as what? As a whole number. So any positive number that does not include a fraction or a decimal, as long that number is a positive, it's a whole number, and it does not include a fraction, but zero is now included. So you're going to have this as what? As and not. So it's going to be from zero up to infinity, all right? No decimal, no fraction, okay? Then we've got the integers. We talked about integers being positive or negative whole numbers. So whenever you talk of the integers, you must be talking of positive or negative. So the integers that you multiply, I mean, you multiply a certain whole number by a negative, it becomes an integer. So these are the ones that we have as our integers, which are represented by the letter Z. So they actually start from negative infinity and end up to positive infinity. They do not end these values, all right? So that is the set indication that you can have negative three, negative two, we talked about these guys. Also the rational numbers. So also talked about this that a rational number must be expressed as a ratio of two integers as a fraction as a ratio of two integers a and b which represents what which represents our uh, integers and b cannot be equal to zero b is not equal to zero so these are whole numbers the integers the proper fractions the improper fractions the mixed d the terminating decimal and the recurring decimals. Remember, I talked about this, and I said here we are going to prove that these are actually a rational numbers later on on another exercise. Then we also talk of the irrational numbers, which is represented by Q uh, to the X to this Q bar like this, right? These are non-terminating, non-recurring opposite of what we had on rational. Then we talk of the square roots of the numbers that are not perfect squares, the cube roots of the numbers that are not perfect cubes, etc. And also pi is part of irrational numbers. But do not confuse with 22 over seven because uh, when they say take pi to be 22 over seven, there, if they give you as a fraction like this, that one is a rational number, it's a fraction, it's a ratio of two integers but pi is not. Pi, the one that we have on our calculator, is not a rational number. It is an irrational number. Let us take this pi here. So you're gonna have shift, you press this with pi, which is equal to, so as we can see, it's not a recurring decimal. So if it is not a recurring decimal, it means it is not, uh, a rational number so that's an irrational number pi also then we talk of the real uh, the real numbers remember i said for the real numbers this is any number on the number line any number that can be found on the number line it can be a decimal it can be a fraction so we are talking about all rational irrational numbers put together so when you combine these rational and irrational together they give us what real numbers the non-real numbers are the ones that do not produce uh, real numbers so calculations that do not produce real numbers are the ones that are for what for non-real so if a number is non-real it does not exist mathematically you cannot simplify that number talk of the square root of negative values the square root of negative three the square root of negative nine Talk of a number that is being divided by zero. Talk of a number that is being divided by these 
they do not exist on uh, in math. So that's why you see on your calculator, it gives you a met error like that to show you that this does not exist in mathematics. So that those are the ones that we refer to as what? Non-real. All right, so we just have a simple exercise. Like I said, we shall have another one, which we shall be actually changing converting this to show that it's actually a, a rational number, this and that. So we just work with time as we move on, we shall have that exercise as soon as possible. All right, so I want us to consider this exercise that we are having in this case here. We have an exercise that we are going to work on so that we can see how these questions are supposed to be answered. How are we supposed to answer uh, such typical questions? So I'm not gonna waste much of your time, guys. We work with these numbers. I just want you to go through your numbers, uh, read everything, understand everything that you're given uh, on this part. All right, so we are going to consider uh, the first part of our question. We are, we are asked in this case, uh, to state whether, all right, here, that is a uh, state whether the following numbers are rational, irrational, or neither. Uh, when they're saying it's not a uh, rational or it's not irrational, that's where we put the word neither. That means that number, it's not a real number. Because to be rational or to be irrational, it must be what? It must be part of uh, the, uh, the real numbers. But if it is not, then it's non-real. So let us consider uh, the first one, 0, 0.25. Can we say 0, 0.25 is a rational number or not? Yes, 0, 0.25 is a rational number. So this 0, 0, 0.25 is a rational number. The reason why we are saying 0, 0.25 is a rational number because it is a what? This one is a terminating decimal. So remember I said all terminating decimals are what are, are rational numbers, it ends. Or you can write it as a fraction, uh, 0, 0.25, which gives you, uh, I'm not gonna just redo this, guys. I'm just gonna use the calculator so that we just have it as a revision, all right? So that's 0, 0.25, which will give you one over four. So as you can see, it's a ratio of two integers. So that means this one is a, it's a rational number, but the reason that we are supposed to have in the actual sense is we have what? We have a terminating decimal in that case, all right? We have a terminating uh, decimal, all right? Then the B part, which is negative two, negative two is also a rational number. What are we considering on negative two? On negative two, we can consider this as an integer. Remember I said all integers, integers can be positive or negative, or numbers, all right? Or you can just express it as a fraction, all right? Then see, negative two can be expressed as over one, which means we are having that as a what? As a rational. So that is, yes, this one is a what? It's a, it's a rational, all right? Uh, then we move on to pi plus six. Can we say plus uh, pi plus six is rational, or it is irrational? All right, remember what we said on pi. We said pi falls under uh, under irrational numbers because pi cannot, we it is not it, 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 it is not a terminating decimal. One, it is not a terminating decimal. Two, it cannot be expressed as a fraction. And if you add six to that, it does not change anything. I want you to see because you are adding six to something that cannot be expressed as a fraction. So this one, it means still it does not give us what? It does not give us uh, a rational number, this one, because you're gonna have 9,1, this and that, which is a non-recurring decimal that we have. So this one is an irrational number. Remember irrational numbers, we said we represent with what? With the Q1 like that. So that's irrational number. All right, we move on to the square root of 10. The square root of 10, cannot be simplified, we cannot simplify this, we cannot have it as a fraction of integers. So that's an irrational number. All right, we move on to, to E, 
which is the square root of negative uh, 16. The square root of negative 16 cannot be simplified. Remember I said the square root of a negative cannot be simplified. So this one, it means it's, not, it's neither of these, right? So this one is totally out of these. It's not a rational. It's not an, e, an, an, an irrational, meaning to say this one is a non-real number. We are now talking about what? A, a, a non-real number. So it follows under and neither. It's not part of what? It's not part of what we are expecting. The square root of a negative is non-real. All right, we move on to the square root of 16, guys. We know the square root of 16, 4, that's plus or minus 4. So this one is an, it's a rational number. Why are we saying it's a rational number? Because 4 can be expressed as a as a fraction 4 over 1, which is uh, we've got uh, integers, a ratio of two integers, all right? So that means in that case, we can have this as a perfect square. We talked it as a rational. Also, zero, we talked about this zero as, as a rational because zero can be expressed as a fraction, zero over one, whereby these are integers. Remember, zero is an integer, one is an integer, and this one is not equal to zero. So it means here, we have it as a rational, all right? H, uh, this one cannot be rational. It five over zero. Remember, I said if the denominator is having a zero, it cannot be simplified. So this one cannot be irrational. It cannot be rational. It cannot be simplified. So it's neither of these, meaning to say it's a, it's a non-real. This one is a non-real number that we are talking about. We are talking about a what? A, a non-real, which is undefined, a number that is undefined uh, uh, actually. All right, let us check this. Is it a terminating or not? All right, so the, this one to show that it's and so on and so on and so on, it means there are so many values that follows there. There are so many vol uh, values that uh, that follows in that case. So are we going to have this as a rational or not? If we are to make a simplification, if we are to check, are we having something that is changing? All right, if I'm to check here, I've got five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, um, it's, it's a repetition. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. So this one, we talked about this type of a decimal, which repeats like that. And we said it's ref we, we refer to this as a recurring decimal. And I said a recurring decimal is a rational number. Why? It can be expressed as a fraction of what? Of two integers. And I said that we are going to have it as a proof later on, all right? So if you see this repetition here, it shows that this is a, a recurring decimal, a recurring decimal, and we said a recurring decimal is a rational number. So this is a rational uh, number, all right? Then um, we move on to zero comma this, all right? Uh, if I check properly, I don't see anything that is changing here. Uh, these numbers, they're just different throughout. These numbers, they are just, they are just, they are just not the same. This one, there's nothing that is that is common here. There's nothing that is common here. Uh, all right, let's check for pilot. Don't see anything common here. Seven, because it's an endless decimal, as you can see, but I don't see anything common. Three, four, six. I don't see any other three, four, six here. I don't see any other three, four, six here. So this one, uh, it's not. This one is, it's not, all right? This one is an irrational number, this one. Uh, we do not have it as as uh, as uh, as a recurring decimal. We do not have values that are, that are repeating here. Like if you check, so this one, that's an irrational, this one. It's an irrational, it's a non, uh, terminating is not going to end, and also it's a non-recurring decimal. This one, all right. So this one is a non-terminating. It's a non.
recurring at the same time, all right? So that was the idea of this uh, question. Then we move on to K in this case, which is the cube root of negative uh, 27. Remember, we can determine the cube root of negative 27. The cube root of negative 27, because it's a perfect cube, this one. So the cube root of negative 27, it gives us negative three. And negative three is a rational number because it can be written as negative three over one, a ratio of two fractions. All right, so for the cube root of 27, if you are not having this in mind, just use your calculator here to find the cube root. Just check the cube root of uh, negative 27 like this. You can determine this, which is negative three. So that means you can be able to determine it. So you can just, oh, I'm not showing the calculator. Sorry for that, like this, guys. All right, the cube root of negative 27, like this, which gives you a negative three. Uh, sorry for that. So that is what you're going to have as of the cube root of negative 27. So meaning to say, this one is a rational number because it can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. All right. Then uh, the cube root of negative nine, this one cannot be determined, does not exist. Actually in mathematics, it does not exist. We can't determine uh, the cube root of negative nine. Anyways, let us go back to our calculator here. The cube root of negative nine like this, as you can see, this number here is not uh, changing actually, all right? So the cube root of negative nine, we can determine it direct, but the, 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 the decimal that we are having is not a terminating, all right? And also it's not a recurring decimal, all right? It's not a terminating, uh, it's not a recurring decimal. So it ends up giving what a, an irrational number in that case, all right? But the first one, this one, it was exact. This one is not exact, you can't write it as a fraction. So that means this one, is gonna be an irrational. Then pi over three, all right, pi, remember we said pi on its own, it's an irrational number, right? Pi, it's an irrational number, this one. So we can't simplify this, all right? So the moment we divide by three, it does not even affect anything, it still remains as a what? As an irrational, as an irrational number. Then we move on to n here, which is the square root of nine over 16. Remember, this can be simplified. You can even use your calculator, guys, to check what you're obtaining on the square root of nine over 16. Then you'll see that, all right, this can be simplified or not. So that's the square root of nine over 16 like this, which gives you three over four. So obtaining three over four means it's a rational number because we've got what? A ratio of two integers, three being an integer, four being an integer. So that means uh this one is a what it's a rational number right so that was our exercise as we can see guys to state whether these numbers are rational uh irrational or neither of that part that you're given so this is what you're expected to know in your syllabus for these numbers and like i said we are going to have a class again so make sure that you watch all the videos so that you'll be able to understand everything. We shall have a class where we shall be talking about our recurring, uh, meaning to say talking about any uh, recurring decimal or any number that you might have, which is a decimal that we are going to show uh, that it's a, uh, to show that it is a rational number show that it is a rational number so you are supposed to be part of that class make sure you don't miss that class so that you'll be able to understand if i'm given 0 comma 1 dot like this if i'm given 0 comma 5 2 uh like this how can i show that it is truly a rational number so we shall have that on another class so be uh, stay tuned for that Make sure that you subscribe if you're new to this family and let us share our videos, guys, to your friends uh, so that they also do benefit from these revisions, uh, from these revisions that we are having as we are starting uh, having our basics from scratch and also uh, going further with our question papers in time so that you'll be able to relate how do they ask 
questions under the number system. There are questions that can be asked. So do not take this part just like for granted, guys. You are supposed to know this part. So we shall have uh, questions to come from past exam papers so that you'll be able to revise together uh, with us.